This video is sponsored by Make My Move, which is an online marketplace for potential movers. There, you can view hundreds of communities actively recruiting remote workers with fantastic incentive offers. See the link in the description to learn more. Morning, Mr. and Mrs. Howe. Oh. Beautiful day, isn't it? It's ideal flying weather. Why, a pigeon could wake up in a morning like this and feel like a new bird. Well, you know the old saying, birds of a feather gather no more. <laughs> Did you ever think you could live on an island? Not that island. This island. Up ahead of us is a little place that I'm sure you haven't heard of. Most people in Georgia probably have, but I bet they couldn't tell you where it is on a map. We're on our way to St. Simon's Island. Of course, this is a small town video, so the things you're going to see in St. Simon's are going to be the same kind of things you'll see in any small town. Small mom and pops, cute neighborhoods, and a slower pace of life. But as we'll see in St. Simons, all that small town flair we normally see is just a little more flary. Back in the day, everybody lived in rural areas. Then, bam, everybody moved to a big city. It was okay at first, but then it got too crowded and dangerous and there was way too much drama. So now everybody's scrambling to figure out where they can go. The only place that's left where it's safe and cheap anymore are small towns. So it might be time to bring it back to the heartland, everybody. This is Tiny Town 2.0. Ah, the joys of the beach in Georgia. Well, there aren't a lot of beaches in Georgia, so any beach is a good beach here. Georgia has a long coast, but because of the lay of the land, there isn't a lot of sandy shoreline like this. As you can see, it's low tide. And let me tell you, out here, the tide is low, low. Georgia's shoreline is all kind of like this. Lots of small waves and a lot of mud. So if you don't like mud, you probably won't like this. The beach we're on now sits at the eastern edge of a place called St. Simons. It's on a smallish island off of Georgia's coast. The whole place is separated from the mainland by a channel of ocean water. Across the bridge is a really sad place. We'll talk about that later, but over here, it's certainly not sad. It's pretty nice over here. Now, if you're thinking about moving to a small town, you have a bunch of questions. Where will I work and what will I do are the big ones. For things to do, there's a lot. We'll talk about the beach again later, but this is cool. At the far edge of St. Simons along the water is a village. Here there's everything a small town needs, shopping and dining and places to socialize. Now you'd probably have to share your village with all the tourists if you lived here. Because it's so neat here, people come from all over the south. And as you can see, the types of shops here reflect that. People started coming down here in 1870, so they put a big hotel down by this shore and the village sprung up around it. At the end of the peninsula, there's a really cool pier where people hang out all the time. There's even a free trolley that goes up and down this entire island, so you could come down here whenever you wanted. And it's really safe in St. Simons, so you could probably even stick your teenage kids on it and they'd come home alive. Or if you're really rich, you could fly in and out of town. There's a little airstrip on the south end of the island that looks like it's big enough for most private planes. But I'm no expert, so don't try to land here unless you talk to them first. Golf is a big deal in the south for wealthy people, and there's numerous golf clubs in St. Simons. Most are in really good shape, too. You'd think everybody here golfed because of all the golf carts driving around. The speed limit on the island maxes out at 35, so if you're a lead foot, that might get a little bit frustrating. I know what you're thinking. There's fancy shopping and a private airport and golf courses. Is St. Simon's too fancy for me to move to? I'd say probably. The average price for a home here is $609,000 and probably going up every day. But you get what you pay for here though. A lot of the neighborhoods are very quaint and clean and safe. There's large mossy oaks all over the place, so it feels very Southern. If the high home prices don't make you feel bad about your bank account, even worse, more than a quarter of the homes here are second homes. So there's that. St. Simons is home to 12,000 people and the average family makes more than $100,000. Many of them don't live here year round and a lot of other people in town have been holding on to their homes for a long time. 92% of the island's white, 1% of the island lives in poverty, probably the maids. 
Now, if you're on a strict budget, there's some apartments and condos here. I hardly doubt there's a trailer park on the island. Down by the water, you'll find the nicest homes, as you might expect. Everything here is well over a million smackers, as you also might expect. Back in the day, England turned this island into a slave colony, and they grew rice and cotton out here. That's why there's such a strong Gula culture here, even to this day. I guess the cotton they grew here was nationally known because it had such long fibers. And due to the long and storied history, people say they see ghosts all over St. Simons, and I believe it. But I'm telling you, the Georgia coast is growing on me, people. It's really underrated. All the mossy trees and nice people and porch swings and lightning bugs. St. Simons is a really neat small town. It's not all amazing around here, though. Back across the bridge on Georgia's mainland is Brunswick, basically one of the worst places you can live in the state of Georgia. On this side, the average house brings in $25,000, and about 4 in 10 people collect welfare. The average home on this side of the bridge is six times less than across the bridge over in St. Simons. Do you remember the Ahmad Arbery shooting? This is actually where that happened, here in Brunswick, Georgia. Three white men were found guilty of murdering a black man who was just running through their neighborhood. It was totally tragic. This is where your kids would go to high school, since there's only grade and middle schools on the island. Private schooling is an option in St. Simons, if you're that kind of family. But downtown Brunswick's pretty nice, and there's a lot of neat history and good people over here. There's certainly far worse places you could live in this country, I'll tell you that. St. Simons Island is the largest of Georgia's famous Golden Isles, which also include Jekyll Island and Sea Island, all of them about an hour's drive north of Jacksonville. Some old Spanish explorers came here a long time ago, and they said the golden sand and the golden sunsets were so neat they had to give the place a nickname. And it stuck. The beach is really interesting here. This place has a really weird coast. The tide goes way out creating this big muddy expanse that makes these really interesting patterns. It almost looks like something you'd see on Mars. Walking around, you see all these weird holes that what I think are crabs go into. Not sure what lives in these little homes. I think that might be crab poop piles. It's definitely poop, but from what? I don't know. Not sure what kind of big build bird this guy is, but he's got to like the mud. In some areas, the sand is sandy. It's not all mud. You might see some whales or dolphins or even alligators in these waters. You'd see all of this if you made St. Simon's your home. And your friends would definitely be impressed when they find out there's all these fancy resorts along the beach, too. Clearly, if you're a painter or a photographer, you'd enjoy it. Hikers and bikers would as well. The weather here is pretty mild. It'll get into the 60s in the winter and into the 90s in the summer but it rarely freezes. It's probably snowed here before, but if it ever happens again, you'd probably get really excited. Most of the northern end of the island is marsh and woodland, but there's a lot of churches up there. There's churches everywhere here, people. If you want to go to church every day of the week, this is totally the place for you. I couldn't find a stat to back it up, but I think this place has to have more churches per capita than any other place in Georgia. This would be awesome to live in, but I don't have a lot of money yet. Well, little Kylie, that's okay. One day you can move here. But for now, you could always find a city that'll pay you to relocate. There's lots of little communities just like this that need people to move to them. And some will even pay you a bunch of money or give you tax breaks. Do they have an app? I'm not sure. Why does everything have to involve your phone? Bye. <coughs> now I know you're wondering, what would I do here for work? McDonald's is hiring. <laughs> because it's kind of a resort town, most of the jobs are related to tourism of some sort. Lots of hospitality and retail jobs. There's other stuff you could do here, though, and I bet you could find something you really enjoyed if you made this your home. Just don't expect a high salary, that's all. Some small towns make more sense than others. It all depends on what stage in life you're in. If you like living out in the middle of nowhere on the coast, and you have the means to do so, St. Simons, Georgia could be a neat place to think about. It does get crowded here for a lot of the year, especially on the weekends. But it's certainly unique, and it's definitely safe. And you don't even have to know how to fish. You can just come down here and hang out like everybody else does.
I really did like St. Simons. I, I found it to be a charming little small town. It, it's weird that it's described as a small town because it's it's on a very large island that actually kind of takes at least 20 minutes to go from one end to the other. It's a it's a very large area. It's super pretty. Tell people kind of what it's like to live there. Yeah, so St. Simons has that southern charm feel, um, that southern coastal charm feel, kind of like you were just describing. And it also kind of presents that some ecological serenity to the place. So it's just a great place to go. I feel like for a time period, it was more appealing to an older generation, but times are starting to change. So there are people there of all ages and it's just, it's a great little place to live. And it has a lot of different opportunities. It has a very rich history. I think that's important if you were going to visit to know that there's a rich history there and um, to learn about different things about the island. Mm -hmm. So uh, my, one question I always ask is how these places have changed. And I, I guess what I'm gathering is it's not just a place for old retired people now. Um, there's a lot of right. younger people moving in, younger families and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's starting to appeal, you know, business-wise, there's a lot of movement as far as that goes. And I think it's just a very well-rounded town as far as population goes. So that is one way that it's changed over time. Of course, it has a very rich history there. So a lot of people, I feel like, will go and visit based on that. They can find out a lot of neat information about Georgia. St. Simons is one of the Golden Isles. It's the largest of the Golden Isles, which includes Sea Island. You have St. Simons Island. You have Jekyll Island and then Little St. Simons Island. And the mainland is Brunswick. And those are all in Glen County. Um, so there are a lot of different things to do. And if you move on St. Simons and find that you're bored because it is a smaller town, you have so many different options and places to go around it. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to know how, where will I work? You know, I like the idea of living in a small town. It's, it's safe. It's cheaper sometimes. Uh, I don't know necessarily if St. Simons is going to be cheaper than, um, a lot of other places. Um, it's quiet, you know, but where will I work? Are there, there's probably outside of service industry, retail, hospitality, that kind of thing that, that sure. you know, mm -hmm. are most people going to have to work from home or commute? I think that St. Simon's offers a variety of places to work. Of course, you do have your hospitality jobs. You have your restaurants. There are a lot of unique eateries there that people can go to. You have your shops. Um, not only could you work at a shop, you could, you know, have your own shop if you wanted um, to open your own business. There are a lot of original shops there, which is neat. You know, you go there and you're not going to find it anywhere else in the world. But it's just you have a lot of unique creative people who are there who make one of a kind things for people to purchase. Um, I also feel like, you know, there are like I said, restaurants, hospitality, like we said, uh, some people might have to, you know, work remotely, which is a lot more popular now these days because of COVID and what all that has brought to the world, really. But I think that that's similar in, in any place. Um, small towns are, are different, of course, than bigger cities, but I feel like there's still a lot of opportunity in St. Simon's. You also have your health industry, you have education. Um, there are schools there, great schools. You have, you know, uh, different health places to go to. So I think that there are enough job opportunities to meet the needs of most anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like a, like a really neat place. It sounds amazing to live in a small town on an island off the coast of Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, what are the downfalls of living in a small town because a lot of people like the idea of living in a in a, in a, a place that's not large but you know they want to know it can't be perfect i mean it looks perfect i'm making it look <laughs> great but yeah. you know there's got to be a down downside um what, what would the downside be to living out there i think as far as any small town you've got where once you've been there for a certain period of time somebody's going to know you everywhere you go so 
they're going to know your business most likely. If not, they're going to try to know your business, those types of things. Um, that can be intrusive or feel intrusive, especially if you come in from a larger city where people are not as friendly and not as in your business. Um, so I feel like that's probably the biggest change that people have. Uh, with other small towns, I would say that the cost of living is probably significantly different. I don't feel as much so with that with St. Simons because St. Simons does have a higher cost of living compared to other small towns that I've seen and, and been in. So I feel like it's still a livable place, though. You could still go there, have a job, find a place to live, but it is going to be a higher cost of living than what most small towns would be. So I do feel like that might be a downside to it. Mm -hmm. How did people even find out about St. Simons? I had heard of it. I live on the East Coast. We, we go through Georgia a lot going up and down the Eastern Seaboard. Um, the only reason we ended up there is because we were going to, it was just convenient for us to stop between uh, Daytona beach and home. And we looked on the map and I was like, Oh, look, a cute little small town. Let's yeah. just stop there for the night. I had never really heard of it. How do people find St. Simon's when they're deciding to move there? You know, I, I think it's just research, researching as far as where you want to move. Uh, most of the people who live on St. Simon's are permanent residents. So you don't have, it, it's not as of a, there are tourists there, don't get me wrong, and there are people who go there for vacation for sure, but it's just not the same as going to another place that would have more of a touristy feel to it. I think there's a lot more of an original feel to St. Simons, and I think you would just find out by, by research and seeing if that's where you want to live. It's, it's not like known for anything completely famous that everybody would recognize, but there are some great history lessons to learn from it. So there are a lot of different places to kind of go. There are a lot of things to do there. You can go paddle boarding, biking. It's more of that low key um, type of place. If you're going to go visit, not your, you know, it's, there's not a lot of like, if you go to Key West, you kind of have a list of things you can choose from. It's not quite to that level with St. Simon's. You do have more of a residential feel when you go, and there are a lot of locals around um, in the places that you visit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Georgia doesn't really have a lot of coastline that with traditional white sandy beaches, right? Um, you know, just due to the lay of the land. And, and there's a nice little stretch of beach right there at the end of the islands. That's going to be a selling point for people. Yeah, and one thing that a lot of people ask about um, is the lighthouse. That is, it's still maintained by the U.S. Coast Guard, so it's still like in working condition, but that's another historical, uh, you know, part of St. Simon's. A lot of people kind of go and want to see that. Um, so I feel like it's one of those places you kind of just happen upon or through research, you find out that that's where you want to go visit, but it's not a huge touristy spot on the map, which is a great thing for people who want to live there. Well, it might be a little bit more uh, after I publish this video. Sorry. Yeah. To, <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. I get a lot of people that, eat that, you know, when I go into small towns, some of them are not nice. And I point out, this is what a small town would be like. That's just very cheap, but you know, you got to think about, could you really move here? Sometimes I go to a small town that's beautiful and charming, like St. Simon's and people send emails or comment like, Oh man, thanks dude. Like you just made it even more popular now and we don't want that so. <laughs> it's a very bright and vibrant and just fun place to be and the the locals they are very welcoming um, and there are a lot of people who are moving there from out of state um, just southeast Georgia period but we've had a lot of people who have retired and moved there from you know New York Pennsylvania Maine I know people that live on St. Simons from all different states and so I think that's another thing that makes it wonderful. You do have your, your Georgia natives, but you also have just this group of, you know, a different diverse people. And I feel like that's important when you go visit there to know that you're going to feel welcomed and loved. And I, I think in any Southern town, that's the objective. People want you to feel that way when you come and visit. Yeah. It's warm. It's welcoming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Uh, you know, unlike a lot of the Northeast that is not warm and welcoming and, and pretty, uh, a lot of the stuff up there is just past its prime when it comes to, um, 
how things have, have evolved in this country. And um, yeah, St. Simons is a breath of fresh air down there in the South. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it has beautiful oak trees. Like you can go and take a picture anywhere and it just looks amazing. It looks like you're in this most amazing place and you, and you look around and that's where you are. I mean, you're surrounded by these, you know, luscious mossy oak trees and it's, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty kind of everywhere you go there. It's well taken care of. You don't see trash on the ground. You, you have people who take pride in the island itself and keep, keep it up. So I think that's important too because there are places we can visit where you, you go into it and you feel like, oh, you know, the people might not care as much here because there's trash everywhere. Um, but it's not like that there. It's very clean and welcoming. Since COVID, you know, we have just seen such an increase and people around here say, oh, it's going to start slowing down. But it, it really, it really hasn't. I um, mean, and, and you know that, by the way, you haven't really been able to get in touch with me. It has been nonstop. I've just been here and there and everywhere. Um, but there was something I was going to say. Oh, one of the things I ask everybody, what's bringing you to Georgia? Almost every person who has come from out of state has said, the gun laws oh. yeah so we have a new gun law in georgia that passed you can have a concealed you don't have to have a concealed carrier's permit anymore you can carry a concealed weapon without having a permit now if you cross you know state lines you have to have a permit and there's there may or may not be reciprocity between georgia and that state um however i, I really feel like that's made a difference i mean I've had a crazy amount of people say, well, you can have guns here. This is the last place I feel like people are going to take away your guns. So, wow. I did not, I didn't yeah. even think of that. I was going to say, people say all the time when I say I'm from Georgia, they're like, oh, well, I know Atlanta. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. At Atlanta is so different from South Georgia. I mean, we're about four hours from there, but there's a huge difference between, which I have friends who live in Atlanta, but you're looking at night and day. I mean, you just, it's just not, it's just not the same I and mean, we don't have we don't have the same issues or problems or anything you know i feel the state is atlanta and then everywhere else like that's two yes. the two ways to to break up the the state mm -hmm. it's pretty much that yeah it really it really is i mean it's crazy how it's that way but it truly is small towns because who wants drama small towns where you won't get stuff robbed small towns aren't as big as a big place everyone here knows your name maybe that's good or that's bad who knows where you can park your car wherever where you can watch the man kill your cow where you can be a mayor and in charge where you might one day make some new friends Small towns, because who wants drama? Small towns, where you won't get stuff robbed. Small towns, aren't as big as a big place. Small towns, are a great place to live. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting, that's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great you should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.